I'll invite you at this time. Just paste your uh, responses in the chat. Um, this question. So you're answering this question. Which area on the island are you from? Or anywhere in the world? All right, Concordia, Mary's Fancy. Woo, Madam Mistake. Sucker Garden in the house. Got more Belvedere residents. Uh huh. Middle Region, Hope Estate, Canada, South Reward, Guana Bay, Ebenezer, Betty's Estate. Awesome. We are covering a lot of uh, the Dutch side of the island. Nice. Cold Bay. Spring Concordia, we made it to the French side. Awesome. Town, Mary Go. Great, great to have you join us this evening. All right. So another question we have for you this evening. What are you doing to take care of yourself? What are you doing to take care of yourself? So can you just, you know, Place your answers in the chat. Sleep, mm, very important. Thank you, Mr. Fernando. Keeping busy, exercising. Mm, that's something I really don't do much of. I should do more. Social distancing, that's important because of the times we're in right now. Eating, Ooh, lotion, rubbing lotion on. Taking vitamins, that's also important. Great, great, great. Yeah, it's important to shower. Mm -hmm. That's that's important. Read, watch TV, play games, eating healthy. Awesome responses thus far. Gardening, yeah, that's something that really, um, um, really quickly during um the pandemic. Great baking. Mm. Awesome. Drinking water, that's also important for staying healthy, listening to music. Yep, bush tea, that's right, Miss Gums. Prayer, what can we do without prayer for the spiritual um, persons in the room? Um, other participants, right. praying, being happy, awesome responses. Thank you. All right. Another question. How did the online learning work for you um, and your child last school year? So for those of you who are parents, how did it work? How did the, the online uh, learning work for for you and your child and for those of, of you who are students that are tuning in you can share how did the online um learning work for you it was okay yes besides the internet yeah that's something that we unfortunately we have to we have to work with what we have right bit difficult Oh, someone said, not so well, not so good. So we'll have those. Um, great. Thank you for your responses. So we're just taking, you know, some, um, some responses from you, some feedback um, based on the different questions that we're posing, just to set the tone a little bit for the evening. All right. So a final question before we start. Um, would you like to have your child attend in school physically or online at home at this time? Both online and physically. So far, based on the responses that are coming in, it looks like most of you would prefer online learning because of the times that we are in. Okay. Thank you for your participation. 
Thank you for being so patient with us. Good evening all. And thank you for taking time out to join us for an exciting and informative Zoom presentation. The topic for this evening is parents, guardians, and children preparing for the upcoming school year. My name is Nina Espacio Joseph, and I will be your host for the evening. I hold a Master of Arts degree in school counseling, and I'm also a certified early childhood curriculum trainer. I am pleased to introduce the speakers of the evening. These ladies make up a dynamic group of St. Martin therapists, myself included. We have a passion for educating, sharing knowledge, and sharing knowledge and tips on different social topics. Mrs. Gina Mamtani Mabani holds a Master of Arts degree in school counseling. She is an educator with years of experience working with students with special needs. Dr. Andas Ramonda Hansa is a founder of Mindful Elevation. She is an experienced behavioral therapist, a certified life coach, and a stress management counselor. Ms. Judy Edouard is a child and adolescent psychologist who has experience working with children with social, emotional, and behavioral challenges. She is currently completing a doctorate in clinical psychology. Ms. Jessica Richardson holds a Master of Arts degree in school counseling and has been an educator for over 20 years, both on the elementary and secondary levels. Ms. Amy Arundel is a counselor, transformational coach, educator, facilitator, and motivational speaker. She is currently a doctoral student in organizational leadership. Now, before we cover the house rules and get into the meat of the presentation, I'm inviting you to participate in what is called a grounding exercise. Good evening. At this time, I would like you all to sit back, close your eyes, and take a deep breath in. Slowly take your deep breath in and exhale. While you're exhaling, feel your body relax. Take another deep breath in and relax. Continue to do this while scanning your body while you're taking your deep breath in, check the sensations in your head, your shoulders, your neck. Breathe out any tension you might be feeling. Another deep breath in and scan your stomach, your legs, your feet, and release any tension you might be feeling. Take another deep breath in and relax. And may you be able to take in all the information that is shared with you tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Gina, for that grounding exercise. I feel calm. And I'm sure the other participants are as well. Now for the house rule. So the purpose of uh, this presentation is to give you the parents, guardians, and students tools on how to navigate learning in the classroom, online, to navigate learning in the classroom as well as remotely. And also to give you different uh, resources and tools that will prepare you for this journey. So for the house rules, we would like you to be respectful to one another, okay? Any questions that you may have, you can just place it in the chat. And as much as possible, be an active participant, okay? Personal information outside of this webinar should not be discussed. 
and please mute your mics to be able to hear the presenters. We will also be um, having two, sh um, two short um, segments where we will invite the participants to go into smaller groups, which we will call a breakout room. And then you'll have uh, uh, some time to have a short discussion and we'll be having two polls, okay? Just to get your feedback on some more questions that we will ask. So without further ado, we will have our first presentation by Ms. Mamtani, and she'll be sharing tips on care and safety in the classroom. However, I would like to share this um, message with you. To be informed on ways on how to cope with the new normal and to have a kind when your child is in school and or following online classes. This is the whole reason for us preparing these presentations and hosting this Zoom session, okay? To so just give you some extra tips on how to navigate um, the waters during this time. Okay, so now without further ado, Ms. Mamtani Mabubani will continue with her presentation. Ms. Mamtani. So welcome everyone again. And I will be touching on the topic of um, sitting in the classrooms when we do go back to the class. So as you know, we are all in, in unsecure times at the moment. And uh, we ended off 2019-2020 uh, school year online, and we are continuing back online for the moment. Um, in order for us to proceed, we thought it helpful to bring some tips to parents, students, teachers, and everyone, because we know there's no handbook right now for us to follow what to do next. So I hope uh, the tips that we do share with you are helpful. So as parents and guardians, we must do all that we can to ensure the safety of our children. You parents, guardians, are your child's first teacher. So whatever you do, whatever you say, your children picks up on that. You are their role model. As they say, um, as parents, you have to take care of yourself first too before you can help um, anybody else as when you do fly they tell you to put your mask on first before anybody else so we believe that any kind of strategy um, any lessons the children learn it starts at home first so in order to prepare our children for in the classroom going back to the classroom um, it would be great if parents can start to talk to children about what kind of procedures would we see in school during COVID. Um, practice washing hands as you enter the classroom. So maybe you can do that at home when the child is home. Practice washing hands frequently. Yeah, practice keeping hands to yourself. Now we know when children are in school, that is very hard for them to do because they like to meet up with their friends in the class. They borrow each other's materials and there's a lot of touching and playing going on. So it's a whole new world for our children as well. And it's going to be challenging. But if we parents can keep talking to our children and reminding them that right now it's not the right time to, you know, touch your friend's materials or um, hugging and touching anyone. I, as an educator, I love to get, get hugs from children as soon as I enter school, and I can tell you I will be missing that. But in for the safety of your child, for the safety of yourself and everyone, we need to talk to our children about avoid hugging and touching anyone, whether it's teacher, children, um, principal, anyone. And parents, we can do that by role modeling at home. I know at home because we're in the safe, uh, we're in the same house. We tend to, you know, hug and touch everyone. But if the children are used to doing that at home, 
they will do that in the classroom as well. Um, practice hand sanitize, sanitizing your hands and cleaning your desk. So at home you can practice it by cleaning your dining table or your table. I know at school we do have um, the cleaning staff, but it's also advisable to get your child to walk with some wipes and get their tables clean. So that at least they know that where they're sitting, it's clean. Now teachers, teachers um, will have their procedure and routines in class once we get in, but it's also advisable to let your children have, um, you know, the method of cleaning and not sharing their items. That's another big thing. I know we teach sharing is caring, but at this particular time, it's not the right time to share your materials or your masks, which will be a very big one. Now, although it's difficult for children, especially in elementary school, um, as parents and guardians, please explain the importance of keeping a safe distance from other children in the class and the playground. It's going to be challenging. So maybe we can make it into a game and create new um, greetings. So for example, on this slide here, we have some greetings like elbow bump or spirit fingers. So maybe our children can come up with their own greetings that they don't have to touch anyone. Make it into a game. Um, bow to each other or air hugs. So it gives them different ways of uh, communicating with their classmates and friends, but from a distance. Now at this crucial time, it is very important that there's an open communication between parents and school. Parents should feel comfortable asking school any questions that they may have in procedures of safety for their children. T should teachers need assistance at this crucial time, parents try to be available and um, to help them um, if you're ever called upon. Because all of us are, are in the same boat um, facing this situation. Now, this is, I know it might be difficult for some people, but here's a tip. Maybe you can plan and prepare to pick up and drop your child to and from school uh, in order to avoid the bus situation. Now, as educators, we know how the bus situation goes. There's no one to monitor your child on the bus. And uh, the bus driver needs to concentrate on the road and uh, children tend to get into fights on the bus or definitely sit very close to others. It will be for their safety and your safety as well. If you, the parents or guardian, observe your child having any unhealthy emotions, please notify the school counselor. Together you, both of you can work on meeting your child's needs. Now, when I say unhealthy emotions, I, uh, it could be something as um, not sleeping well or not eating you know, regularly like they normally should or mm -hmm. having mood swings. So monitor, monitor your child's behavior. And if you're, if you're concerned with anything, definitely reach out and talk to your school counselor. Here are a few more tips for to help with the transition to school. Um, again, be a role model. One of my favorites is mindfulness. Now I've been doing this with my godson since COVID began and it's drilled into him. So in the beginning of the day for five minutes, he's going to turn on YouTube and do some mindful meditation. And at the end of the day, before he goes to bed, he does his meditation as well. So doing this sets your mood for the day um, with uh, with uh, some meditation, it sets your mood, a calmer mood for the day, and in the night you would sleep better. At this time, at this difficult time, it's very important to teach our children to be grateful. So every day, let them say, what are they grateful for? Three things that happened today. What are you grateful for? We need to learn, teach our children how to be grateful and focus on the positive. As whatever we do, whatever we think, comes back to us. So parents, I hope this has helped. Uh, uh, bond with your children through game time and talk with them, be honest. And the uh, main, main thing your children needs, everyone needs, actually it's not only children, everybody needs love and attention.
parents as you are the one being out of the house more often for supermarket work whatever it be check yourself check the symptoms that you may face and um, uh, try to practice social distancing now i'm going to show you a video that would help you understand how um, how important it is for us to wear masks Thank you, Ms. Mampani Mawubani, for those very important tips. And I love doing greetings with um, my students and getting those hugs as well. I think my favorite greeting is what, what they call it? The dab? Maybe I need more practice with it, right? Awesome. All right. So remember parents, something that Ms. Mamtani shared, model. And for the students that are here, you should monitor your um, emotional health as well. Now, at this time, we will have a presentation by Dr. Anders Ramonda Hansa, and she'll be sharing um, some information on care and safety using online platform for education. Ms. Hansa, you have the floor. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about the care and safety using the platform, the online platform. So last year, we all, at least our children had to go online for like three to four months and um, they had to stay home to follow the different classes. So it was something that everybody was, of course, thrown in from one day to the next. And um, some children were better to able to cope with it. And when we go in and talk about when your child is online. So some tips that as parents you can pay attention to is the appropriate use of the Internet. Do, does your child know how to um, use the Internet? Did you have a talk with them about how they have to use the internet, which different site they can go to, and um, what all they can search on the different sites? The, and this as well counts for the social media as well. If you know on which social media they're on and how they're behaving on the different social media. Um, when you use the internet for the research and the learning, do they know how to do that? Um, are they acquainted with the different sites where they can go and do the different um, research for whatever they need or um, for um, how to search on YouTube for their um, lessons that they might need so they can get a little video to watch on it. Um, the different dangers of being online, um, what the consequences are for that and also um, with that comes, for example, the cyberbullying. So on this slide, you can see that I have several more tips for you. So I'm not going through all of them. And then um, when we're going for um, the next one, which is going to be the behavior and the guidelines online how you have to be behaving when you are online and uh, when um, people talking with you online, when you have to go in the classroom in front of your teacher together with your um, fellow students. Um, you always have to be respectful. You have to 
and also expect respect because you're giving it and you're also um, expecting the respect and you're expecting for everybody to treat you the way you're treating them. You be skeptical about the different information that um, you're seeing online. Don't take everything that you're seeing online um, on face value. Is the information true? Are there other sites that substantiate the information? Is there somewhere that you can go and verify if the information is um, correct? Another one is learn to think before you um, talk, or in this case, before you write um, whatever information you want in the different chats that you're sharing. Because sometimes we want to write something because at that point we're thinking about it, but then afterwards we're thinking, oh, it should have been better that I would have think about it first before I go and send the information because now it came over in a different way than I wanted it to come over. And don't give negative um, attention to, um, um, don't give um, negative attention to anybody and especially when people trying to be negative with you, don't give attention to them because that's how they um, thrive on, on it, on negative information and um, people responding on that. So um, as parents, do you, what is your behavior online and have you been discussing the different behaviors and guidelines online? And if you know how your child is behaving online. When we coming to the online sharing, um, over sharing, sometimes when we share too much information, like I said before already, it has opened the way for others to shame you and or misuse the information that you shared because they don't understand the context that you um, sharing the information or for just for malicious practice, they, um, twisting the information that you send and send it around. The sharing of inappropriate information, what it is that we want others to see from us. Is that information that um, we want to have five years from now that people still sharing or people can still um, read it? Because remember, whatever we put online nowadays, it is there forever. It isn't something that you can take off very easy um, nowadays. The sharing without thinking, information to be shared is a negative or positive information. Will it harm yourself or others? Or are you um, posting out of anger? Are you thinking first before you go and post the information? And then be mindful of how you behave and um, react and also act online is very important. So parents, again, and also um, students or children, do you know what information you need to share and or as parents, did you talk with your child about the sharing information online? When we go into um, the dangers of providing personal information, do we know what we can share and what we cannot share? Because when you um, sharing your, your name, your um, address, your home address, your uh, maybe your account number, bank account number, um, what can other people go and do with those information? We all have, we all heard multiple experience from other people when that happened, what happened with um, those information. People go and misconstrue that information and use it in a negative way. And then at the end, you are the one in trouble. So um, don't share your information online. Don't share current or past location. Don't share inappropriate pictures. Don't share your home address. Don't share your medical history. If you don't want people to know where you live, don't share pictures of your home because nowadays it's easy based on that to be able to find the information. A very important point that we wanted to discuss tonight with you is cyberbullying. 
how to handle with that because especially with everybody being online you could almost say 24 7 cyberbullying it's something that comes up very often and especially amongst children but don't get it um, twisted that also um, between adults cyberbullying is something nowadays that happens often so some of the points that you have to be aware of is um, that um, others will be using the info in internet for spreading negative and negativity you need to learn how to block delete and report negative content so when somebody trying to start bullying online do you know what the procedures are that you have to take for you to block them or report them or even when you're on the job is there any procedure written um, on any protocol written how to handle with cyberbullying um, you have all you always have to do your best to communicate positively or positive with others because once you're spreading positivity you get it back and then of course those people that want to um, be negative or or bully they will not get a chance to be able to do that you need to learn what digital pressure is so that is very important because the same as in um, face to face online that happens um, as well people will pressure um, your child to do abc to um, share naked pictures or um, to share their personal information and that is not something that we want to do because of course we don't want our children but also ourselves to come in a um, situation that at, at the point we don't know how to get back out of it you always have to keep the communication about the online behavior open and you have to be able to address this point and to learn from each other so um, participants do you know how to handle with cyber bullying and like i said what the protocols are when it comes um, to that so now we're going to um, when you have um, classes online as students do you know what behavior you have to portray so um you come over positive and with respect to yourself and to others so i have here um 12 points what we called um, the netiquette so what is the etiquette for behaving online so some of them are no yelling you have to try to use the chat box to ask questions related to the topic in class and do not use it as a personal um, chat for you to have personal conversation with each other you have to know how to hand in your work and or assignment online you have to know what the rules are for that specific teacher at that time um, what is the rules for asking questions for when you're coming in for when you have conversation or for when you have to answer question do you know as student do you know what those rules are and then now that we're going to start back um, at least like the minister said the three coming weeks might be um, online so as a student if a teacher don't present you with rules of how you have to do it online you can always ask your teacher as well so you are aware as well what the rules are for that um, particular teacher and remember practice makes perfect so the more you practice how you have to behave online the better you get in it and the easier it will go <laughs> Google started with um how you call that the b internet awesome and how they did it is because they wanted um young adults children to be able to learn how to navigate online and how to handle and behave so they came up with these five things so the smart is to share with care like I said before already, which information are you going to share and how you're going to share it. Be alert. Don't fall for fake. When you're getting certain information, do you know if those information are the truth, they are reliable or what? 
maybe you have to go and look a little bit further before you take those information as face value. You have to be strong and secure your secrets. Not everything that you're going through or, or that is happening with you or by you, you have to be sharing it online. Because um, maybe when you're sharing it with um, two friends, those two, two friends happen to be the one spreading the information which you might not want. So you have to know what information you're sharing or not. You have to be kind. It's cool to be kind. Be friendly, be respectful to others so you can receive it back as well. And be brave. When you are in doubt, talk it out. If you don't understand something, ask question. If um, something happened, try to see if you can talk with somebody about it. And then so you know how to behave and how to handle um, the next time. So this program that the Google came with, it's a multi-phased program a program with educational curriculum and it has different games in it as well where um, the students can learn all these different things and then teach them as well how to be online so thank you if you have any questions for this presentation as well as the other ones you can always ask them in the chat enjoy the rest of the presentation thank you Ms. Hansa for the uh, netiquette reminders and also the be internet awesome tip. So remember parents and guardians and students, be smart, be strong, be kind and be brave. We will now uh, place participants into smaller groups. Okay. Um, in your group, we would like you to discuss the following question. What has been your challenge when it comes to the education of your child or for the students? What has been your challenge um, during your online um, learning journey? Okay, some of you did give responses before, but now as a um, a group, you will have an opportunity to just share amongst yourself. The tips and strategies you will be receiving on tonight is a step in the, um, the, the right direction to help you cope with any challenges you may be facing. Okay, and Ms. Uh, Judy Edouard will continue with a presentation on common strategies for parents yes. and children. Because, because of the times that we are living in right now, it is important that we familiarize ourselves with some of the uh, calming strategies to help us. Ms. Judy? Good evening, everyone. Calming strategies for parents and children. In order to know which calm you use, when, how, and why, it is important to identify the emotions, whether be it surprise, happy, guilt, or sadness. And part of identifying your e emotions is to be and have an understanding of the impact your emotions have on your behaviors and the ability to manage those emotions in a positive way. And emotion regulation. Now, why is emotion regulation important? It helps us to keep calm during times of high emotions, and it helps us to control negative urges during times of emotional distress. It helps in preventing aggression and other emotional states or behaviors that could be dangerous to ourselves or others. Finally, it is important for our mental health, academic achievement, and it, it is important in forming social, positive social relationships, which are crucial for success in life. Now we are going to look at children with healthy 
emotional regulations and children with poor emotional regulation skills and how does this look like? Children with healthy emotion regulation skills, they are able to experience, express, and also manage a range of emotions. They are able to engage in appropriate behaviors in response to emotional distress. Also, they are able to adjust well in transitions and if their situations have changed, they're able to adjust well to that and they show a high tolerance for frustration. Children with poor emotional regulation skills are quite the opposite, actually. These are the children who may exhibit a limited range of emotions. They have difficulties coping with stressful experiences. So any change in their lives, any change in their schedules, they would have difficulty coping with it. And it also results in a, it can result, sorry, in an outburst of negative emotions as well as aggression. They're also socially less competent and are often less successful in school. So you begin to see the in their grades, have difficulty learning, and they're less productive. They, these are the children who begin to isolate themselves from the, their friends and also their family members. The next step after identifying motion is helping your child to find healthy and productive outlets for their intense emotions. Now, it's it's, it is important to remember that every child's nervous system and sensory system is different, it's unique. So it is realistic to expect a lot of trial and error. It gets worse before it gets better. And also to expect that what works at one, one age, well now what works will change over time. So meaning, what worked for your child when they were five years old will not work for them when they're 10 years old. So the, the developmental age child is so important to keep in mind and helping them in identifying healthy, calming strategies. A few questions to get you thinking about what soothes your child is, is there a particular space your child find calming? Where do they run when they're upset and frustrated? Do they seem calm with physical touch, such as a hug, or they appear to avoid it? Do they prefer to be around others or respond better to quiet, Solitude. Now, when children are anxious or stressed, there are some strategies that can help them to relax and to regain a sense of control. Practice these strategies to help discover what works best for your child or children. Uh, there are 12. I won't go through all of them in detail, but I'll go through some of them. Number one, the first one, take a few deep breaths. Before we began this webinar, we did the grounding exercise. You can also do this with your child or ch children. Have your child practice this move. Breathe in slowly through your nose, hold it for a few seconds, and slowly exhale through your mouth. Together, you can repeat this with your child several times. Okay, so we know that we weren't able to go on vacation. We couldn't take a plane, we couldn't go anywhere. So point number three, take a mental vacation. Help your child visualize a relaxing place with eyes closed, of course. It helps for your child to picture a favorite destination like the beach or Dubai. Then guidely, then gently guide them to slowly start build up 
a picture of how it looks, how it smells, and even how it feels to be there. Uh, point number six, think positive. Ms. Gina touched on this earlier during her presentation. To help your child deal with anxiety when faced with a challenge, teach strategies for replacing negative thoughts with positive ones. Parents, together with your children, you can brainstorm empowering phrases or mantras, such as, I can do it, or I am strong, or I believe in myself, or good choices. Um, Gandhi once said, and this is for all the boys and girls who are Zooming in and who are also live on Facebook. So listen carefully, because Ms. Judy is going to say this one time. <laughs> Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts becomes your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits becomes your values. Keep your values positive because your values becomes your become your destiny. Seven, we all love music. So crank that tune up. <laughs> Listening to music can diffuse tension in a variety of ways. You can listen to music that can lead to spur of the moment dance party or find something soothing, calming. It's, it's good to have uh, more than one choices and to have a balance of music. The final one says, go to calm down space. Have a designated space in your home gives children an opportunity to retreat when they feel out of control and rejoin the group and they are able to rejoin the group when they need to. It is important to keep the space comfortable so your child will want to visit it when they are in need of a self-imposed time out. Next, we will look at additional strategies for bedtime to promote connection and fun. So during bedtime, you can, during bedtime, these are some things you can do together with your children. Have tea time, put a puzzle together, read a bed story in a silly voice, or you can play Simon Says throughout the bedtime routine. Again, at the end of the slide, parents will be giving an additional 60 bedtime activities to promote fun and connection. Okay, next, for, the, for those educators who are on here, welcome. We are going to talk about calm down strategies for the classroom. Getting students to settle down at any point of the day can be very daunting, especially directly after recess. You can feel as if you're living a nightmare. Children look forward to those precious moments so that they can get spending time outside. And they should. Children are entitled to their recess. Okay, so if you're trying to give you your recess, let your teacher know that you are entitled to your recess. Recess is a necessary part of the day that gives students the chance to play, and it also complements the rigors of physical education as well as academic time in the classroom. Recess helps with socialization skills and can improve cognitive um, performance. The concern, however, which each, which every elementary school teacher has likely come across lies in getting their students to focus after recess. 
thankfully to this webinar, there are several calming strategies that can be implemented in the classroom. So there are 10. Again, I won't go through all 10 in detail, but I'll choose a couple and I'll go through them. It's important to remember that whatever strategy you choose, your students will benefit more if you stay consistent with it. Predictability in their schedules is essential in giving the students structure and making it easier for them to know what behaviors you can expect from them. It also gives you, the teacher, more time, more meaningful time in instructions and lessons rather than spending 20 minutes on a child who's constantly off task. Okay, uh, we look at creating a calming atmosphere. Let's face it, harsh fluorescent lights, bright decors, and you have 27 busy students after recess in the classroom, it's definitely not a calm environment. Okay, so how can we fix that? For a short period after lunch, recess, whatever you want to call it, dim the lights in your classroom. Have students put their heads gently Gently down on the table as they rest their cheeks on the cold desk. Play soothing music, classical music, or slow jazz. Those are good options. Let your, your students drift off to the sounds of violin or peaceful piano notes. Instead of music, you can also put on um, other relaxing sounds, such as the oceans. A few examples are peaceful piano and the sounds of the forest. Now, students who are more visual, okay, and they need something to focus on, aquarium and nature videos are great options for this. Remember that when you're transitioning your students from recess to class, Make sure that they understand how to travel and walk quietly with them. The longer they are allowed to function, you, your teachers, the longer it will be before they are calm in your classroom. Point number two, independent work. For example, writing or journaling, uh, doodling or coloring works. For the, for the older students, another routine that works best is to not assign anything specific and leave students time to catch up on work, read, or whatever they like that is quiet and productive and or relaxing. This approach also provides an opportunity for your students to ask you questions. Yoga is another good strategy, breathing exercises, guided imagery, warm-up exercises and brain games. Um, next, you can education video games. Now for your older kids, they may enjoy the TED Ed's collection of animated student Talks. In the previous slide, we saw a designated place, which is called a calm down, um, calm down area that parents can do at home. Teachers, you can also do it in your classroom. Uh, the calm down place can consist of cozy, peaceful items like a soft rug, bean bag, butterfly chair, pillows, sensory toys or another item you can put in there. Um, while primarily, while it is primarily used for children with attention disorders and special needs, some sensory toys are designed for relaxation as well. So a glitter jar, stress balls, finger paint, play are all also items you can put in your calm down relaxation area in your classroom. 
Okay. Uh, so in closing, keep your to keep your classroom calm while working with a room full of high energy kids, students. Remember that you need to stay calm as well, teachers and also um, parents. Most of these common techniques for students will work just as well for adults. When they are doing their deep breathing exercises, do it with them. When they're doing their yoga, do it with them. Their coloring, join them as well. This can bring you closer to your students and bring you closer to them and decrease stress levels as well. So I do hope uh, that this session was informative and that you're calm. I'm feeling calm. Thank you. Thanks, Miss Judy, for those tips. And I'm gonna take your suggestion and take a mental vacation to Dubai. Mm. I can visualize myself on the camel now. I'm coming off the camel, I'm touching the sand. Ooh, it's hot. Yeah. And affirmations, you covered. Those are my favorite. I am smart. I am beautiful. I am an achiever. So we've received tips thus far on care and safety in the classroom, care and safety using online platform for education, common strategies for parents and students. Now, another important topic is to discuss back to school safety and hygiene for everyone. And Ms. Richardson will now share tips to keep us safe. Ms. Richardson? Good evening, everyone. I'm here to speak about back to school safety and hygiene for everyone. So some things you can do to protect yourself when returning to school physically. And since we are not returning yet, we can start practicing at home, right? We have about three weeks to really get it in. Okay, wash your hands, wear a mask, social distancing, eating healthy, exercising, sanitize and disinfect. Wash your hands often. I cannot emphasize this. This is my first, first tip. It is very important that we teach our students and our children how to wash your hands the correct way. Soap your hands. Walk. Um, wet your hands first, sud your hands with soap. Make sure you wash them for at least 20 to 40 seconds. Rinse and dry thoroughly. Next is a video, a short video on how this is done. Can you hear? Is everyone here in the video? Nail beds. You do this gesture for 20 to 40 seconds. Your wrist as well. After 20 to 40 seconds, you can rinse your hands already with water. Make sure you do the same gesture as you did when you were washing your hands. After thoroughly rinsing your hands, you dry your hands off. And your hands are only completely cleansed when they are thoroughly dried. So that was how to wash your hands. And it is important, parents, teachers, adults, young teens, if you have anyone younger than you, that you be responsible, you be the role model. Why? Because when you do it the right way, you're teaching your children, your students, your younger siblings, how to do it the right way. Next, wearing a mask. Now, wearing a mask is mandatory here in St. Martin now. So wherever you go, if you go in an establishment, where there are people that is not from your household, it is required that you wear a mask in order to slow down the COVID. Now, why we have to wear a mask? Because it protects 
droplets that may come from your that come from the lungs and that is how the coronavirus is spread um if it lands on your 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 hands or God forbid on your hands or, or your, your shirt or whatever you touch it and you won't touch your hands and stuff like that or your eyes or your nose it protects you from that okay so wear your mask avoid touching your face and i posted wash your hands first because you have to wash your hands before you wear your mask and wash your face it don't make no sense you put on a clean mask and you Face dirty and your hands dirty. That don't make sense, right? Might have a mask. So wash your hands, wash your face, and then put on your mask. Here is a video showing you how to do that the right way. you put it on your mask, make sure that the blue part is on the outside and the white on the inside. The wire that is on the mask, make sure you place it above your nose bridge. And then you stretch each string over and around each ear. After doing this, you make sure you secure it your mask around your face and make sure that it fits well. Okay. okay, was that clear everyone? Now there's also a proper way how to remove your mask and I'm going to show you this in a video clip as well. the strings from behind your ears and gently move the mask away from your face. To remove your mask, wrap the strings from behind your ears and gently move the mask away from your face. Okay, there you go. The proper way to administer a mask in the proper way to remove a mask. Now, social distancing. I think this is the most challenging aspect of this whole tip giving this whole coronavirus is because we know children, even people, we are social people. We like to be chummy and friendly, you know, everybody, but most people. And um, even I myself kind of get caught up. The last time I went to the shop and I saw a friend I didn't see in a while and I, I got tempted, you know, to give hugs, but we have to be very, 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 very cautious. We have to be very mindful of our behavior. As I said, be responsible for your behavior. Wave, air, kisses, hug. Especially now, people try to just keep far. Now, mask, say air, kisses, whatever you do, don't. Listen, just stay away. Don't go to pregnancy, stay away. All right? Next, eat healthy, listen, eat your greens, eat your fruits, and do not like neglect our local fruits, our kinip, mango, what else, pomseret, oh no, pomseret is not in season now, tamarind, all of those healthy fruits, organic, eat them, drink your bush tea, if you don't have a lemongrass tea in your um, bush in your yard, call me, ask somebody, um, vervine, uh, basil, sweet basil, get, get your antioxidant level up, get your immune system up, drink lots of water, hydrate yourself. Listen, my mother make a mean turmeric shot. I don't even know one, no way to eat it, me, but I forget to take it today, but I take it every day. Trust me. Those old people got it thing though. So if you can take one of those shots, those two, and I know you have people here have the little shots they take every morning and they little bush tea. So I know you're good in that. All right, eat healthy. That also ward off and builds up your immune system so that, you know, if you get in contact, you don't get it that bad or don't get it at all, okay? Exercise. Hey, listen. 
Go for walks. Do yoga if you're into that. Go for a swim. Listen, every week I go for a swim, okay? I'm going to tell you that. Every week I go for a swim and I get my vitamin D and C. All right? Do some gardening. I do that as well. And if your kid's like, oh, um, we are into that. Do some house chores. There must be an old press, an old cover that needs to be reorganized and it takes a day to do. Get moving. Exercise. Last but not least, clean and disinfect. Not only the car needs to be cleaned, the bathroom, the kitchen, but the cell phones, school bags when they get ready to go to school. The laptop, now that you're gonna be doing distant learning, clean your laptop surfaces often, all those places that are touched, the toys, the tablets, all of those things that are frequently touched, make sure you have your wipes, show your children or your young, sister, your students how to disinfect and clean and not waste these products because you know they're so pricey. Show them how to do it. Do it right and they will model you. In closing, I want to remind you of this. Let us be responsible for our hygienic behavior by being role models and respecting other people's um, personal spaces. And I know by doing that, we can reduce these numbers, we can get back to being well, close to normal again. Thank you. Thank you, um, Miss Richardson, for those tips. And I must admit, I have not been exercising as much as I should. One of my colleagues um, have tuned in, and I'm sure that she would agree with me. But guess what? We are human at the end of the day. However, you know what? You don't need to feel overwhelmed. Even if you feel this way, there is someone that you can reach out to for support and someone who will be of an encouragement to you, okay? Now, if I were to quiz you, how many of you would receive a 100% passing score on the four R's? Let's recap them. Be a role model, be responsible, be respectful. And by doing these first three R's, you will be playing your part to cover the last R, which is reducing the spread of the present virus that is affecting the world over. At this time, We'll invite Ms. Amy Arundel to share tips on communicating with your child or children and resources, presenting you with resources um, as guardians and parents and as well as uh, students, children. Okay, Ms. Arundel. Good evening, everyone. You've heard so much information this evening and I would like you to just take a minute, breathe in and breathe out. We got this, okay? So now I'm gonna be speaking to you parents and to you, my lovely children. Parents, guardians, are you checking in with your child daily? And when I say check in, I mean every day. Do you say, hey, how were you doing? How was your day? How was your classes? If not, please, please, please start. School begins on Monday and you know, if it's something that you have not done before, start doing it. You can ask them one question a day. You know, hey, how was your day? How was your experience today with online learning? You know, get that conversation going. And as it was mentioned before, yes, we're all in this pandemic together, but we are all experiencing it differently. Imagine that we're in the middle of the sea and you're on a nice 16 level cruise ship. A wave comes, the cruise ship will not move. But if you have someone in a little dinghy, a little small little dinghy, and that same wave come, that dinghy will capsize. Okay, so just be mindful that everyone is experiencing this pandemic differently. 
parents involve your child or your children in daily chores and ask them to help you with the younger siblings if there's younger siblings present. This way, the burden of the household work will not be on you alone. You can share responsibilities. Encourage your child or your children to disconnect from their device at least at 8 o'clock. That way they can calm themselves down before going to bed and that way they will have a better quality of sleep and they will be restful the next day. Reach out to your child's teacher and find out what is expected of you. Uh, this should be done at the beginning of the school year so that way you and your child's teacher are on the same page. You know what is expected to you, of you as, a teacher, as the parent, and the teacher knows what is expected of her as the teacher or him. And that way, everyone is cleared on the way going forward. And then, imagine having a device-free day. Yes, we're going to put the little devices away for a day. I'm not going to say which day it is, or it should be. That is for you and your family to decide. And then ask yourself the question, what would happen if you decide to unplug from all your devices? No internet, this means no Facebook, no Instagram, no TikTok, whatever have you, for the whole day. The answer to that question is, the world will still go on, but you will have taken a nice needed pause, okay? Students, Please take notes. Although we are going to be sending you this presentation, take some notes. Every day, I need you to set a daily goal for your studies. Do at least two subjects a day. Make a study plan. You study for 30 minutes, you take a break for 10, and you repeat that. And when you have accomplished those goals, you take it off. Embrace new technologies. Do your research and see what applications can assist you with your homework. There's Khan Academy, there's YouTube. Do your research. Test yourself. You will know what you do not know and what you need to study more. Find a healthy balance. I know Ms. Jessica just spoke about that. Exercise daily and try, you know, I put try because I know it's hard, but please try and eat healthy and drink lots of water. But most of all, be positive. Find the good in everything and recite your positive affirmations. If you do not have positive affirmation, reach out to your counselor or your social worker, reach out to us, we'll send you some. Students, you got this, you got this. Collaborate with your classmates and form study groups and assist each other. If you can collaborate to play 2K20, Call of Duty, Fortnite, and everything else, you can collaborate with your classmates and you can get your schoolwork done. Turn your lessons into stories. Turn what you need to study into a relatable story. That way you will remember what you needed to study. Establish a study routine. Take two hours daily. You study, you go over your homework, and it's only two hours and you can have the rest of the day. Once you do that consistently, you'll be okay. Like I said before, mark small challenges. Anytime you have completed any challenge that you say, hey, you know, I couldn't have done it, but you did it. If you need to treat yourself a little ice cream or ask your mommy and daddy or mommy alone or daddy alone to just get a little bit of money and get a little something nice and small for yourself so that you can say, hey, I have done this. I did this. Do it and consult with your teachers. But if you're going to consult with your teachers over anything that you do not understand, there's a procedure that you need to follow. When you reach out to your teacher, be specific. State the assignment, the page number, and the date the assignment was given because teachers are human also. It's not only you alone they teach, so you need to have those things done when you're reaching out to the teacher. Explain what exactly you do not understand and then you explain to them that you need some further explanation or clarification. Okay, so remember, state the assignment, the page number, the date the assignment was given, and explain exactly what you do not understand. Okay, you got this. We got this. 
parents, remember, you are not alone. We are here for you. Building resilience in your child or children is learned and therefore it should be strengthened, especially, especially during these times. Ask your child or your children if they can pick a song that explains how they are feeling at that moment. And parents, you may hear some songs that may shake your soul, but it's okay. Remember, it is the song that your child is feeling like at that particular time, okay? And then you have an open discussion on why they chose the song and what it means to them. You as the parent or guardian can also pick a song and explain what it means to you or why it's resonating to you in this particular moment. So that way you're sharing with your child and your child is sharing with you. You can also watch a movie and you can do the same thing. Ask them, you know, what they liked about the movie. Why? What they didn't like about the movie and why not? And you can do the same thing. That way your child is opening up to you and you can talk to your child and use that moment as teachable moments. All right, so we have some more parenting tips for you. Acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. Acknowledge what your child is feeling and do not downplay it or ignore it. Just like how when you're going through your things, you know, you, you know what you're feeling. Your child too go through different things. If you do not know, understand something, ask your child and ask them questions, but be positive, be sensitive, be present and put your phone down. Don't ask them a clarifying, picture, uh, clarifying question and then you have your phone in your hand and you're on WhatsApp or you're Facebooking or you're answering email. That already is a turn off to the child. That means that you're not really interested in what they have to say, okay? Be there for them physically, emotionally. Hug them and tell them that you love them daily, okay? Especially now. But most of all, be open. You need to be open with your children. Listen to comprehend. Listen to comprehend. And be non judgmental. Sometimes we ask a question and our body is stiff and we're ready to jump on the child. No, we ask a question and we're going to allow that child to answer. Okay? And then one last one before we go let your child choose an activity where you hang out together for 10 or 15 minutes with no interruptions, okay? And you can do this if you have, if there's multiple children, you can do that activity with each child. Give that child your personal time, their personal attention, okay? And remember, there's no better way for you to try and for you to show love than being present and being there for your child. And parents? I have to agree with you. You have to agree with you on being present for your child. And for students that are tuning in, when having a discussion with your parents or siblings, it is also important for you to be present as well. Boy, oh boy, this device. It's hard, right? You always hear that ping, ping, ping sound. It's so hard to put this down. But guess what? The old age saying, practice makes perfect. And if you practice this daily, if you're present with whomever you are having a discussion with, guess what? You will have a more meaningful discussion, okay? So thanks, Ms. Arundel, for those great tips. Oh, wow, we have covered a lot. And I would like to thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my, um, the other counselors' hearts for taking time out to tune in, zoom in um, to our webinar this evening. If you have any questions, you may pose them now, and then we'll just take a few um, minutes to answer a few questions, okay? So at this time, I invite you to complete the poll. Your feedback means a lot to us. All right, some of you are Posted in the chat, great presentation. A follow-up session will be nice. Well, this is something that we would um, really consider 
as this is our first webinar and it wouldn't be our last. So your feedback would mean a lot to us. So all the little kinks and everything, we will be able to better, um, to reduce them and better um, our next uh, uh, webinar. Yeah, so we have feedback from our Facebook page. It was very helpful and interesting. I thought it was too. Thank you all, thank you all. So now we would, um, I'll just uh, invite each presenter to just say thank you and bye as we close off this session. Okay, so we'll, I will first start with Miss Gina Mabani Mamtani. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we look forward to having more webinars for you all. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being part of this. We enjoyed giving out uh, the information and we hope that you enjoyed receiving the information as well. And um, keep it posted because we're going to have more of these um, webinars for you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for joining our Facebook viewers, those that zoomed in. We really appreciate your presence. And remember to keep mm -hmm. calm. We thank you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, yeah. everyone. Thank you for attending our okay, webinar. Thank you, everyone, for being a um, participant and so involved. And I hope you remember to be a role model, be responsible for your behavior, and respect. All right, good evening once again. And remember, we got this, okay? My parents, my students, yes. I wish you all a very, very successful year ahead. And should you need any assistance, like I said, reach out to us, reach out to your teachers, reach out to your school, and we will assist you. We got this. We can get through this. Okay? Have a good evening. Stay healthy and be safe. And with this, I thank everyone for taking time out once again. And a special thank you to our presenters for the evening. Remember, we may be in different boats, but weathering the same storm. Take things one step at a time. Take a deep breath. Stay connected. Have a good evening further. Bye, everyone.